So let's check in with the Jordan Peterson subreddit. A date left and stopped talking to me because I recommended 13 rules for life. Thoughts. Woke stepsister goes topless. Most people would probably stop browsing the Jordan Peterson subreddit after reading um, those two posts. But for today's video, I thought it'd be interesting is if we did a deep dive into the subreddit. Because I made a video two weeks ago talking about the supposed downfall of Jordan Peterson in that a lot of his own fans turned on him for his takes on various different things, but in particular because he joined the Daily Wire Plus. And in the video, I basically said, although I believe Jordan Peterson has always had the same political views, he's kind of gone a bit more mask off in both pandering to a right-wing audience, but also kind of throwing away any elements of civility. It doesn't seem like he's a guy who wants to have a chat with people who have opposing points of view now. And the subreddit kind of reflects that because if you go onto it yourself, and I recommend you do so if you're interested, you will find lots of different posts and you will find a lot of right-wing posts, people posting just like right-wing cultural stuff, then other people in the Jordan Peterson sub saying, like, why are you posting that here? Like, is this what this sub is now just for posting, like, really generic conservative culture war stuff? And then, like, I've just shown you the first two posts. There is some very insane stuff, and there's some stuff that is just totally not self-aware why people wouldn't like you for being a fan of Jordan Peterson, in particular women. But we're going to get into all of that in the video today, and because it's Friday... I just thought I'd maybe have a bit of fun with this. Because the other two videos this week took a lot longer to research, so I thought this one would be a good way to end the week. But before we go any further, please like the video. And in the comments, I guess the question today, and it's something me and FD Signifier spoke about. Do you know anyone in real life who likes Jordan Peterson, but is not a conservative? Because I know one person who I think isn't a conservative who likes him and was pretty unaware of his right-wing political views, but let me know down in the comments. Also consider becoming a patron, trying to build up as many one to three dollar patrons as possible, and the benefits of that, again, access to my Nintendo Switch friend code, and the private patrons Discord server. Also check me out on social media, at the Cavernacle on Twitter, on Instagram, check out the subreddit in the description below, and also check out my second channel, the Cavernacle Extra, where I try and archive my live streams, which I promise I will start getting better at. Also, we are very, very close to 80,000 subscribers, which is crazy. For every 5K, we get a new chocolate orange, so help me finally complete the pyramid just before I go off to Vietnam for a couple months. So my video a couple weeks ago on Jordan Peterson did fairly well with views. A lot of you may have not seen it, but just to recap, if you guys don't know what I'm talking about. Basically, what I did in the video was go through Jordan Peterson's old perception and his old kind of image in the public, where he would get lots of interviews on mainstream television, would appear on loads of podcasts. And basically what I was saying is, even though I believe his politics have fundamentally always been like lurching towards the far right and have been heavily conservative, he at least had an image of being rational, civil, and I played the clip from like the H3H3 podcast to show how these people used to view Jordan Peterson. And a lot of people would even get very mad if you even suggested this guy was a Christian conservative, which he is. But slowly over time, as he got a more right-wing fan base, he started pandering to the right wing itself and he did have some health problems and he did become like more vicious, more, I guess, mean-spirited, less civil and becoming increasingly paranoid more than he already was and started going mask off. Because remember when he started his culture war with the C-16 bill, he pretended it was about free speech and he didn't want the postmodern neo-Marxist to start us down the path of coerced speech, which would result in Canadians who didn't correctly use people's pronouns ended up in gulags, well, during his confrontation with Elliot Page and just general interviews of people, he's just got mask off saying how he pretty much fundamentally does not agree with transgender people even existing. And I did show you some of the subreddit and how some people have turned on him, but I want to go into that even further. And I think to start with, we will start with the most insane post just to have some fun. And then I want to look at these weird like letter things people write Jordan Peterson in the subreddit to just discuss those before we go into how the sub is kind of evolving into a right-wing echo chamber, but not everyone in the Jordan Peterson sub 
is happy about that. So of course we have to start with this absolutely amazing post uh, by Ufrid. A date left and stopped talking to me because I recommended 13, he means 12 rules for life. Thoughts? I sometimes do not understand the hate that people have towards JP. I like JP's social views and relationships, habits, parenting, men and women, and he's one of the most renowned psychologists in the world. Why so much hate? Genuine question. Well, just to start with, he's not one of the most renowned psychologists because that would imply he's widely respected. He is one of the most famous in the West. Doesn't really mean he's one of like the best or widely agreed upon to be the most, I don't know, advanced in his field. But then the comments are quite funny. Then the comments quite funny. How exactly did this conversation go from the to the point of her walking out? She said something like, I never talk to a man who reads JP's books or listens to his lectures or podcasts. And then she literally said, you're over, we're over, our date is over. Other people saying, you well and truly dodged a bullet. Someone else, you dodged a bullet. We were talking about books in general and I was saying how much I learned from this book and recommended that she read it. That's all. If that's all you did and she literally stopped talking to you altogether over it, then consider yourself lucky. People who get that worked up over something they obviously haven't taken the time to look into for themselves aren't all there, especially in this day and age. She probably thought it was a little culty. If I'm being honest, if a girl recommended me a self-help book early on in a relationship, I would probably bail too. I'm not trying to be defensive or anything, but I wasn't mansplaining things or being rude or anything. We were genuinely talking about books and I had just finished the book, so I was just excited about it and started talking about it, but I see what you mean. People hate responsibility and accountability nowadays. It's all about a victim mindset. Next time tell him her, nothing is her his fault. And then Ufrid replying, there's nothing worse than a victim mindset. And then someone replying, you are literally here complaining about being left on a date because someone detests JP and how unfair she was. No self-reflection on your part. You are lucky, I like to think so. Honestly, I super respect the girl who walked out of that date from the mere mention of him reading Jordan Peterson. And it does boggle my mind the lack of self-awareness his fans have. Like, even if they thought his views on stuff like women, patriarchy, which he thinks should exist, if he thought all those things were good, surely they can understand that is a controversial position for a lot of women, right? So if you bring up that you're a fan of him, that is automatically probably going to alienate a lot of women like someone alluded to. And it blows my mind the guy is basically blaming her for her victim mindset because she doesn't like a right-wing Christian conservative author who has blamed women for their own assaults, who has said patriarchy is a good thing and constantly underplays how women are treated in society again. Very happy for this girl that she spotted the signs early and walked out. So another insane post and this one is just absolutely hilarious and at first I thought this was a troll. Like, how can you not think this is a troll? Postmodern neo-Marxism woke stepsister goes topless. My stepsister, who's not very bright, just went totally topless at a family lunch. Her argument, if men can, why can't I? My grandma was there. I found it totally disrespectful. But if I say something, I'm labeled a sexist. Getting tired of this, opinions and again it's very hard to take this seriously but i went on the person's profile and unless they're playing a very long game of being a troll i do not think that this is made up because they're posting on subs like nofab and meditation and other things which make me feel like they are a genuine jordan peterson fan so if they are trolling they are still a fan of Jordan Peterson, but some of the comments make me think this is real as well. So regardless of the gender politics and different views, it isn't at all polite for men to attend family lunches topless either, so why was she? Well, it's the summer. Truth be told, in France, it's not impolite if you're with close family or friends, for instance. Don't engage, you'll never win. It's a cult mentality, so reason never works. I have someone in my family that is possessed by woke and trying to talk about anything different just ends in lots of name calling like sexism, racist, and so on. You're right, it's very weird how they seem to be possessed, like magical thinking or a mind virus. So this is just totally insane, this post. And like I said, you can maybe question if it's even real in the first place. But I do like the belief in the subreddit that this thing is caused by woke. And woke is a mind virus because someone's stepsister feels it's okay to go topless to lunch 
And I feel like most rational people, even people who are fairly comfortable with showing skin, would say something like that is not the norm. It's not something the woke advocate for. Of course, you have places like beaches in Mediterranean Europe where this stuff is pretty normalized. Having lunch with your family, especially like older members of your family, is not a beach. So I don't know if this is a common thing in Europe. It sounds like it probably isn't. Also, I wouldn't blame it on the Western woke because I literally have never heard anyone advocate for the right to eat lunch without your shirt on, um, kind of regardless of gender. Of course, it is a bit more normalized. Maybe if you're by a pool and there are men there who are, you know, in and out of the swimming pool. But again, haven't heard too much about this. So anyway, moving along, I wanted to get into the letter section of this subreddit. Now, I haven't seen this in other subreddits and I don't know how it started in this one. But basically, you can write Jordan Peterson letters and most of them know Jordan Peterson is never going to read them or reply to them. But they still write them like he will so it's quite interesting to read some of them some of them are funny some of them are pretty insane some of them are a bit pathetic but i'm gonna share some with you so this one made me laugh dear dr peterson i've enjoyed your work for years i greatly admire your courage and thoughtfulness among other things i was disappointed in your podcast with michael yon to hear you use the name of jesus christ as an exclamation or a curse as you seem to be a man who chooses his words extremely carefully, this made me surprised and very disappointed, as I believe the natural consequence has to be to stop listening to your podcast. Sincerely, Jim. Again, Jordan Peterson, supposedly not right-wing back in the day, attracting lots of Christian zealots who will drop him because he uses the Lord's name in vain is actually pretty funny. Just wanted Dr. Peterson to know that I do believe in God. I know that he is real. I know the Bible is God's word. I know Jesus is coming back soon. I know we are in the last days. Someone saying, I'm very excited to see Jesus again. How would you know if it was him? How could you not know? So staying on the subject of these letters, but going more into the divide on the subreddit between Peterson fans who like him for, I guess, his psychology and Peterson fans who see him as this culture war warrior. An interesting one I found from 23 days ago uh, on the pull of the conservative narrative Dear Professor JBP, I apologise for this letter's length. I am a young male, recent biological science college graduate, and I became interested in your work near the end of my college years. At a time when I was looking for motivation and inspiration to better both my life and myself, you offered insight on what it really meant to be human. Your talks on philosophy, psychology, and responsibility provided me with the structure of becoming a better person. So I think that's interesting for people listening to understand this person is coming from the perspective where they like his philosophy and psychology. And me and FD Signify were talking about this, and I spoke about it in my last video, where people who are fans of him in the past say Jordan Peterson has different versions of himself. And the ones they often like is this version, but the right-wing culture war warrior is the one the other people like and therefore there is a split in his fan base so this goes on to say i am saddened to see your shift in the ideological focus the image of the kind man whose message was about seeing the world and yourself for what it is has begun to fade i've had arguments with my bi sister regarding watching your videos while i maintain that i viewed your content in order to learn about living a wholesome life she insisted that it was causing me to become bigoted and conservative while I knew that you were right-leaning when it comes to discussions on LGBTQ and their narrative, I knew they were but a small facet of your insight on the human condition. Furthermore, you seemed far more concerned about human rights and happiness. That is no more. You appear to have gotten progressively more wrapped up in what you yourself call the culture war. Your content is angrier and more focused on the dangers of progressives, trans people, and the liberal community. And don't get me wrong, there are questions that need to be asked about their hand in shaping society's identity and what can be considered normal and healthy. And I also acknowledge that their attacks and betrayal of you have been aggressive, constant, and unwarranted. Well, kind of undermining yourself there with this letter. It is no surprise that then you feel the need to defend yourself. I was shocked and honestly disgusted to hear of your addition to the Daily Wire. I had defended and described you as a moderate above all the petty political discourse, no matter how much they tried to drag you down. That's not what he's about, I had said. He might have some conservative views about the LGBTQ agenda, but overall his focus is on the philosophy of being true and good. 
But now here you are, the esteemed Jordan Peterson, flanked by brainwashed religious conservatives like Michael Knowles, who would rather push their own agenda of conservative political hate than actually work to help society in a meaningful, positive way that would result in real change. You said that you don't like conservatives, but now you're being paired with the Daily Mail, the proudest supporter of Prager U. I feel like an idiot now for defending you. If I dared to give you advice, I'd say this. Really think about what you want your message to be. Does watching your videos make someone more equipped to be a better person, empathize with their enemies and learn why they believe the things they do? Get back to your roots and connect with individuals. Ranting about a problem is not a solution. In fact, it often makes things worse. So one more letter about this issue before we talk about the kind of civil war in the Jordan Peterson subreddit. So to Jordan from a longtime follower, disappointed but hopeful, you understand. So again, someone who's attracted to Jordan Peterson because of the psychology stuff. So dear Jordan, I've been a fan since 2016. Your lectures at Montreal University. I watched every day as I completed my undergrad in psychology. I was so impressed with how you combined philosophical, psychological, and sociology academic research together in succinct descriptions of how humans behave and 19th century pseudo-psychology could be explained in modern cognitive and neurological terms. I was so enthralled by your Bible lectures with incredible evolutionary biology reading of a religious text. I remember crying in bed at the Bible because of your reading. And I'm quite agnostic. But today I'm so saddened about how you conduct yourself in these types of arguments about the culture war. It's not nice, it's not respectful, and it's not honourable of you. As a thinker and an academic commentator to claim that criminally cutting breasts off is in any way acceptable way to talk to someone. Yes, there are issues of how we all figure out the postmodern reading on our current society with all of its privileged caveats, our relationships with our identities, our reading of the past and the way we seek equality, but you know deep down that this kind of talking is at worst completely wrong or at the very least unprofessional and disrespectful. I searched for news every week in 2020 lockdown while you were in hospital hoping you would be okay and prayed I would see you speak on YouTube again healthy and I feel I've been let down. You have an incredible mind and beautiful insights and you are wasting it on Twitter disputes and fueling a culture war that 90% of the public understand as just respect people's feelings, and the world is unfair in many ways, so let's accommodate fairness when needed. So I find those two messages really interesting, and I actually wish I had found them before I made my video a couple weeks ago, because they're a perfect case study of what I was saying, in that people are attracted to Jordan Peterson, often for certain things, and then become quite alienated by his more extreme political stances. But Jordan Peterson himself, while being completely adopted by the right over the last couple years, him joining the Daily Wire just shows he wants to side with conservatives and he only sees them as his allies and no one else. The centrists who used to love him, certain liberal types who used to love him, he doesn't care anymore. He just wants to ally himself with far-right conservatives, either for money or because those are the ones who will uncritically accept everything he says. And although I don't like to be fair to Jordan Peterson fans, I think those two posts at least show you there are fans among them who won't accept every single thing he says as fact and know that he's not an expert on these things and also see his values away from contemporary politics. But the subreddit becoming a right-wing echo chamber has been brewing for actually a couple years now. And if you go on it right now, essentially it's a mixture of people writing letters to Jordan Peterson and people just posting right-wing memes, anti-communist stuff, and just real boomer Facebook posts. So let's have a look. So this is from two years ago. Stop trying to make this sub a right-wing echo chamber with many awards and 12,000 upvotes. I've been seeing a high frequency of posts that are literally just right-wing propaganda and have no connection to Dr. Peterson. That's not what this sub is. Peterson is not an ideologue, but this sub has become a cesspool of anti-intellectual shock value, liberal wrecked posts. I expect downvotes, but as a long-time fan of this, I don't think Dr. Peterson would approve of this kind of hackery. Two years is a long time, he definitely would, but other people saying, this may get downvoted, but you need to read this two years ago. 
The reason that you are seeing this post in this sub is because most of the people here are not here because of the work of Dr. Peterson, but rather because of stuff like Liberal's own compilation. This is not a right-wing sub, please take your right-wing politics somewhere else. I've been primarily following Peterson's self-improvement as well as many interesting analytical works, and that is the sole reason I'm here. He isn't a right-winger, and himself has admitted it several times. If you are here and actually care about his work and about being a better and responsible individual, care to be around people who want the best, stop giving your upvotes to all the political BS plague in this sub. Again, 7,000 upvotes, so it was quite popular at the time. But now if we go to the sub today, here is the first thing I came across. Dr. Fauci wearing a mask. It is so easy to be wrong and to persist in being wrong when the costs of being wrong are paid by others. And again, 600 upvotes, but then one of the most upvoted comments is, did I just open Facebook by accident? This is total right-wing boomer BS. Dumb duck right-wingers who think Fauci is an evil mastermind. Other people, what does this have to do with Jordan Peterson? But then you have just like typical stuff against the left. The VA is so woke with this sign here. Please let me know what name you use and your pronouns so I could use the right information. That seems perfectly harmless. Not something to get mad about. Again, you have other stuff about pronouns. Kamala Harris is so woke because she talked about her pronouns during a meeting. The OP saying, this is just absurd now. We can't possibly get any woker than this. So in response to saying that Marjorie Taylor Greene is fash, this guy quote tweets it and says, a tweet from the leadership, the authoritarian left is at it again. And he was saying, and this is related to Jordan Peterson. How exactly? Someone else, this sub needs a serious weed whacking of hypocritical right wing nut jobs like OP. Marjorie Taylor Greene is clearly a totalitarian that wants church to be involved with the federal government. Honestly, what has happened to some of you? The old Jordan Peterson fans were never this delusional and actually stood for something in the past. Now it's just useless ideologues with their pipelines. Someone replying, they are just the new generation of Jordan's Twitter disciples. He panders to this crowd now. I used to be a fan, not anymore. I don't really want to talk about this post too much, but someone talking about the Daily Wire deal. In the comments, um, someone said, Daily Wire has hired plenty of left-wing people to work on their movies and stuff. The entire premise of the platform is to build an alternative for woke Hollywood and cancel culture. They offer refuge for both the left and the right. And someone says, who from the left specifically has a Daily Wire hired as people in front of the camera or to direct content ideologically? And what influence have they had? And the guy replies, Gina Carano, famous liberal or leftist Gina Carano. Why did she get fired from The Mandalorian again? So obviously loads of anti-communist stuff and... Obviously, these people are total idiots because they don't realize what Poland is like today. So this post, 3,000 upvotes. Poland knows what it's like to lose your country. New. Poland to advance new legislation to find big tech up to $13 million per case that censors users or removes posts for ideological reasons. Poland spent 45 years under communism. It taught us the value of free speech, the deputy justice minister says. And then someone from Poland says... We don't have free speech in Poland. This is a BS claim. Sorry. And more anti-communist stuff. Uh, Jordan Peterson would approve. Communist teenagers, I think you're overthinking it. History professors, I think you're underthinking it. OP saying, perhaps it would be best to say anyone who has read history books of the last 150 years, but still close enough. I don't know. One of my colleagues has a history degree and is a store vendor of socialism and Leninism. It boggles my mind. And obviously this ties very nicely back to my video on Tuesday about anti-communism and how essentially most things people get taught about communism was completely made up um, by various right-wing historians, but the Black Book of Communism being the most prominent that claims communism ended the lives of a hundred million people. And as we get into in the video, it is just absolutely grossly inflated. And if we would apply the same standards to capitalism, we could reach the 100 million number very quickly. And also if we even, you know, do capitalism's death toll accurately, it would be far more than people's deaths under communist regimes. But still people pushing back against, you know, the right wing stuff, petition to make this subreddit about Jordan Peterson and his ideas and psychology, rather than a dumping ground for irrelevant right wing news. And that is 2000 upvotes. I just found this one a bit funny. So clean your bedroom. Her utopian politics, her kitchen sink. Set your house in order before you criticize the world. Great rule for life. 
and I find this absolutely hilarious from Jordan Peterson, considering in many interviews, his office does not look very clean at all. So another one for the anti-communism, visual aid for the hard of hearing, crazy idea, let's divide a country into half capitalist and half communist and check on it 70 years later. So it's North and South Korea there. I wonder what country is above North Korea in this picture with all the lights. Could it be China run by the Communist Party? Doesn't really fit in with the narrative I'm seeing on this Facebook boomer tier post. So a bit more anti-communism, interesting perspective. If you told a person in the 1950s that in 2020, housing would cost over 50% of income, college would take a lifetime to repay, families could barely make do even with mum working, we were locked in endless wars and government was paralyzed by crisis, they'd assume we'd lost the Cold War. And people in the comments saying, considering we have Marxists teaching our children, I'd argue we did. We have. The fact that people still can say maybe communism isn't such a bad idea shows we've lost. Because if 50 years plus of that soul-crushing regime lording over billions of lives hasn't been proven enough, we must have done something wrong and lost that battle. I find this absolutely hilarious because the Twitter post in question is literally showing you what a society looks like under late stage capitalism. And this stuff about housing is absolutely hilarious as well because communist countries, ones that are no longer communist and ones that are still communist, have alternative housing models which do not cost people 50% of their income. They have housing projects which give people house. Homelessness is fairly low in several communist nations because people get given housing by the government. So it's funny that they're saying you'd assume we'd lost the Cold War. So it's funny people cannot make the connection that this is nothing to do with Marxism and it's nothing to do with Marxism winning the Cold War. This is capitalism winning the Cold War. How do you think capitalism won? What do you think a capitalist society would look like after the Cold War? It wasn't going to look like a socialist utopia. It wasn't going to learn the lessons of socialist governments and take positive lessons from several of them. It was just going to keep going along and feel vindicated that this economic system was the best, despite keeping people crushed in this brutal system. So I thought it was interesting to look at the subreddit to see the state it's at now with its like Facebook tier right wing memes, but also to shed a bit of nuance on the situation because I do think it's easy and it is fun to act like all Jordan Peterson fans are just like right wing zealots. And that may be true in a couple years, but it's clear his community is still in the transitional phase where you do have people posting about how disappointed they are with him going mask off conservative and joining the Daily Wire. But then you have his new fans who just see him as an intellectual of an anti-woke movement and they feel like this subreddit is a safe space. For them to just post like anti-trans stuff, anti-communist stuff, anti-Marxist stuff, to be fair, that has always been present, but there's been more of a focus on the politics at the moment. And with the prominence of so many religious people in there as well it's clear Jordan Peterson courting this audience has alienated so many of his original fans and like I've always said that Jordan Peterson's politics have not changed I called him out back in 2018 because I saw him for what he was but as you've seen in some of that testimony some people were attracted to him for the philosophy and the religious stuff and talking about more academic subjects and now that is massively clashing for what Jordan Peterson is in 2022. So to conclude this saga, I'm gonna do one more video on Jordan Peterson. Basically, me and FD Signifier did a collab on his channel and the videos up on his second channel where we just talk about Jordan Peterson as a whole and his appeal and stuff like that. Go check that out and I will clip some of it for a video I'm going to make next Tuesday, I believe. I don't know what else I'm gonna focus on, but it's gonna be like the conclusion to this trilogy of Jordan Peterson videos. But anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments. And if you made it this far, thank you for watching.